All right, people. Now, I had a lot of comments in my last video in regards to the most important factors for making ships stronger. A lot of people, well, not a lot of people, probably like a few people, uh, wanted me to make a video about fleet compositions for this game. Now, this is a really, really broad topic overall, so maybe I could break it down to like subcategories or whatever for certain scenarios like campaign, events, OS, and stuff like that, I guess. Um, so that's what I'm probably going to do as of right now. So for this video, we're going to cover chapters 1 through 13 for fleet compositions because this one is probably one thing a lot of people struggle on. Now, the other one being events and whatnot, so we'll worry about events later. But for this video, we're going to talk about chapters 1 through 13 because that's the one where most people play because it's always out there. Events aren't always available and some people aren't in, um, OS range, so I'll worry about that another time. Right, let's start this. So, as I said before, levels are super, super important, right? So, for for the most part, and I'll say this a lot, no matter what you use, as long as you have your levels, chapters 1 through 12 can be knocked out from just pure levels. I'm not even kidding you guys, from pure levels. But, for fleet compositions, it may be a little bit troublesome. So we'll start one at a time. Chapter one, because of how easy this world is, you can use whatever you want, literally whatever you want. If it's gotten to that point where it's kind of bothersome for you, use more ships. Um, the first maybe three worlds or like chapters one through uh, three, you can use one one setups, assuming you know what to do. But I assume most of you guys don't know what to do. So uh, stick to full fleets if you guys want the EXP, and I highly recommend you guys, you guys want EXP because at this state, same stage in the game, you want EXP because it is very, very important. Also, I want to quickly plug in once again my Iron Man account that you guys can follow along, and it shows you guys exactly how I did the game when I started at a very, very uh, early stage of the game with no gacha ships and whatnot, so watch that. But up until chapter 3, because a lot of people farm 13, uh, I mean 3, 4. You can use whatever you want, assuming you have the levels. Yes, whatever you want. If you're struggling at 3-4, because I understand if you're if your goal is just to do, let's say, I want a 3-star 1-1, one, one, I want a 3-star 1-2, I want a 3-star 1-3, and 3-star 1-4, you're going to get stuck somewhere in World 3. I had that problem on my Iron Man account, so what I did was I took a map, like I did 2-4 at the time, and I just farmed that map over and over and over again until I believe my ships were like level 40 or so. At around level 40, with like plus 3 gear, it should be enough to knock out 3-4. Three, uh, three, it should. Now, if you're still struggling with it, push it a little bit further. Uh, but that should be enough to knock out like the, all of World 3. Now... If you're at, if you're somewhere between, if you're stuck at three, th three, four, farm three, two, obviously, because three, two has um, some really good gear. Like all these purple gear are very, very good. It's a very good map to farm for three, two. Even though ma the map design is kind of scuffed, um, three, two is a good map to farm. Farm here, and you get to three, four, and you're good to go. Fleet compositions up until this point does not matter. It does not matter. So knock that out. Four doesn't matter. Five doesn't matter. Now, this is the part where it might get a little bit tricky because when you get to chapter 6, it's the introductions of purple plates. And there's a, quite a handful of these things called suicide bombers where these little um, very low HP, very squishy, uh, like little bombs running into your back line and touch down hits you for like 10% of your HP if it, gets, if it gets through. That's the introduction of this map. So, with that being said... Um, probably up until like chapter tw uh, 12 from 6 through 11, you're going to need some battleships back there. Yes, you're going to need some battleships back there. There are some exceptions where you don't need battleships because your carriers can tank them. But you need a, uh, a noticeable amount of levels to be able to tank those. And your vanguard has to protect your backline as well. Meaning they have to wave clear pretty, pretty well. So let's talk with fleet compositions for chapter 6 primarily because that's going to be the first major point so i'm going to go into uh my third fleet so 
sort by battleships you can use whatever battleship you guys want it doesn't matter whatever you guys want now i do recommend you use a non-uss battleships because if you guys don't know uss battleships cannot slot in a cruiser uh, gun and what i mean by this is i'll show you an example right here we use washington now i do this or uh i think this is right we go here and this the, the secondary gun right I can't use cruiser guns. Now, why is this important? Well, I can use trash can gun, and it's like kind of okay. Uh, but in later worlds, I'll show why. It, it doesn't protect you that that well when it comes to a uh, suicide bomber defense because these spreads aren't super, super wide. They're not super, super wide, so they're not going to protect you with that much. Now, trash can gun is kind of okay for uh, defense. But as of, at this point, guys, if you're a new player, most of you guys don't have this gun. So, yeah, that that's just how it is. So, you use a non-USS battleship, so like, some examples right here, Oris White Howe, I'm not going to talk about Monarch because that's PR ship, uh, Bella Rosia, uh, don't know if King, no, King George, is King George out? I think she might be out, I'm not sure. King George, uh, Duke of York, Prince of Wales, we can go down to like Rodney and Nelson as well, uh, Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth. These ships can slot in a thing called light cruiser guns. So we do this. Now the most common one for suicide def uh, bomber defense uh, is Belfast gun that most people use. But if you guys want to go for cheap and more protection, you can get this gun right here. You slot those in, at least one or two of those for chapter 6. And this will make sure you can protect your back line from any kind of suicide bomber um, defense. Now, it's not going to be guaranteed, and you're not going to protect every single one of them, but considering there's a, a decent amount of suicide bombers that are going to hit your back line, it should be good to go in terms of uh, protecting your uh, back line. So, slot in about one or two of these into your back line with battleships, and this will protect you for the most part. Make sure you have one of these. If you're struggling with Chapter 6, suicide bombers are the, the primary reason as to why, Make sure you have these things. You can farm this in, I believe, chapter uh, thir uh, four, four two or something. I can check real, real quick. I think it's four two, uh, four three. I think four three. You farm that there, and then that'll keep you protected for a good point. You can go from six, seven, eight, nine, and that is more than enough with just those protection. Now, world ten. This is where it's going to get a little bit trickier because World 10 has this map, I believe it's 10-1, where they send in like a row of suicide bombers right towards your flagship. So you got to be very, very careful about that. So what you do here is because there's three of them, you want to make sure you protect your backline very, very hard. So there's multiple ways to do this. If you're going to play manual, the best way to do it is to have... Um, durable or high evasion ships like destroyers could work uh, at this point heavy cruisers are kind of okay but they're not like super super well because most of your cru heavy cruisers are probably in the 100 level 100s by now so they're not they can tank but they're not going to be like guaranteed to tank because destroyers have evasion so even if they tank the hits they can they'll be fine uh, but you want to make sure you have at least three I recommend three battleships that can sustain. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you guys th there's three battleships. I'm gonna do like Rodney, Queen Elizabeth, and make sure they're slotted with those guns that I was talking to you about. Vanguard, you can use whatever Vanguard you guys want. I'm not talking about Vanguard specifically, but we can just slot in those auxiliary guns if you guys are really struggling with that line of um, suicide bombers hitting your back line. You'll notice it probably at the boss or whatever. So make sure you have some kind of fence. And if you have three of these, you're pretty much safe. Especially if you auto battle, you can safely auto battle and nothing is going to kill your backline. Your vanguards, I don't know about that. But your backline, 100% will be safe and you won't get knocked out. So that will carry you through world 10. Again, make sure your levels are correct. So if it's like level 100 right here, 110s are good enough. 100, I mean, uh, World 11 should be about the same experience as World 10. Maybe a little bit easier. It depends what kind of how leveled you are right now. But I believe World 11 is a lot easier compared to 10. 10 is like a, a gatekeeper for most people because that Suicide Bomber um, map, I believe, is, I, th I think it's 10-1. I'm pretty sure it's 10-1. So, World 11, same setup. 
Uh, make sure you have your setup um, back lines and then vanguards use whatever you guys want. DPS, support, whatever. Just make sure you have your battleships and you're good to go. And levels. Now, we're here. This is the part where a lot of people are going to start fumbling and doing all this other stuff. World 12 used to be really hard, but as of right now, it is not hard anymore. It's been about two years since release. This map is not hard anymore. So what do you do here? Now, there are many, many ways to tackle World 12. There are many, many ways. You can do battleships. You can do carriers. Now, carriers is the uh, one I would recommend for most people to do because this map right here... Um, it's the introduction of air, the air mabob or whatever. So we're not introduction of it, cause um, introduction of how it, how important it is is what I mean. Because up until now, there hasn't been many heavy uh, carrier maps uh, from one through eleven. But world twelve though, we have carriers and and quite a few of them. So what you do here is this is how you build a carrier setup well i'll talk about this like more in 13 but here's how you do it first if you want to fit the requirement make sure you stack a lot of uh carriers because you want to stack as much as much aviations as possible right so the general way to do it now world 12 is, is very very easy by the way so it can be as flexible as you want you can use some repair ships like akashi or vesto or slotters and battleships as well here's how you do it so I'm using common ships right here. So let's do like um, Shoho. Let's do a Enterprise, and then we can do like some kind of um, some kind of like heal ship or whatever, or a repair ship if you want, or you can do something like more uh, flexible when it comes to damage. Like I don't know, I'll just slot in um, what's like what's a ship that's farmable that everyone uses a lot in uh, most days. Um, Saratoga, Saratoga. So this right here can be a, gener a generally good setup, right? Now, that's backline. Let's talk vanguards, though. Vanguards, I don't know. Let's do something about damage. So let's do, like, um, what's some good vanguards? <clears throat> let's do a Portland, maybe? No. Eh. Yeah, Portland could work. Portland could work. Okay. Uh, Portland. Where if I can find my Portland. 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 And we need some more. Now we need damage. So you can do, like, San Diego if you want to um, if you have San Diego but we need damage right now so what's a good damage ship that I can slot in that has a sizable amount of anti-air that isn't a PR ship because we're not going to talk about PR ships for this video <laughs> or because I want to try to avoid it if you have PR ships slot them in but if you don't then don't worry too much about it it's not that, it's not that extreme um, free ships hell no 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 um Ooh, I don't know. I can just slide. I can pr basically slide anyone right now, but I'm going to try to be as considerate as possible. Let's do Columbia. Columbia. Even though I should put that in the, the boss ship, but let's do Columbia. And I need another damage dealer. I, know, I guess Laffy could work here. If, you're really, really, if you know how to play correctly, Laffy could work. So, like, this could be okay. Now, the sustain here isn't spectacular because you have one healer so you should watch for your health but this could work um it's not the most optimal setup i'm using free ships obviously for the most part but this should work this could be uh well free ships including enterprise uh but this should work now if sh if, the, if the heals aren't cutting it you can replace shoho with like say a healer like vestal or something uh and that could really really uh, up your sustain and whatnot this will be more than enough to get things done um, but if you want to fit the air carrier requirements, um, you can replace Vesto with another carrier that can heal. Obviously have a healer. But this right here can get things done. Uh, you have some good AA vanguards with Columbia. Um, Laffy is damaged. And Portland's just there to be beefy and whatnot. She really doesn't do much. She's just making sure that you don't sink. Uh, the anti-air here isn't spectacular. I would recommend replacing Laffy with like someone that has a lot more uh, damage. So if I want to be a little bit more... Um, strict on requirements like you want to use gacha ships and whatnot reno can fit here if you have reno um don't use hell i'll save her for a boss fleet um what we got here what we got here um cleveland could work and hmm, hmm, hmm. swift sure oh swift sure can work here definitely um san diego like i said before 
and I don't know, Chappie and stuff, I guess, Minneapolis, Baltimore, Bremerton, these, these all work. USS tend to have high AAs, especially the cruisers, light cruisers, I mean, so that could work. So I'm just going to do a slot right here with Swift, Swiftsure, and that's solid. Two AA ships, a tank, uh, two damage dealers in the back line with, carry, with aviation stat, and one healer. That can be your mob fleet right there. Something simple, nothing too crazy. So get the aviation stat, anti-air vanguards. One durable vanguard in the front and a healer. And there you go. And that's World 12 mob, mob Fleet for you. Now, Boss Fleet. Boss Fleet is not super, super, like, insane. All you have to do for a Boss Fleet is just damage. That's basically it. You can play Sustain if you want to, but I don't recommend it. But you just go damage. So, how do you do a Boss setup for World 12? You can do it many, many, many ways. You can do a Carrier setup. You can do um, a, a battleship setup. It doesn't matter. So I'll, I'll show an example right here. Let's do like Duke of York. Um, Howe can be in there, I guess. And let's do like, I don't know, um, War Spite. This could work right here. You have, three, you have three of these. There's no aviation. So what you have to do here, because there's no aviation in the back line, you probably have, you're going you're to be very, very tight on the, uh, the air superiority, air supremacy. Primacy requirements. Here's what you gotta do. You have to run anti-air vanguards. Yes, I've said it many, many times, but you're gonna have to run them this time around because there is nothing to protect your back line, right? And you're and there's nothing to protect your vanguards. So you have to protect at least one of them. So in this case, we're gonna protect our back line because we need to make sure they don't sink at all. So let's do something like Cleveland, Helena. And we need one kind of durable vanguard. Let's do a very durable vanguard like um, Baltimore. I'll, I'll do Baltimore right here. Boom. Done. Right? You can do that. Now, because this fleet has no setup, your boss fleet has to kill fast. And I'm, I'm not even kidding, guys. It has to kill fast. If it doesn't kill fast, you risk your ships sinking. And if this is your first time going through World 12, it's on lethal. It's, it may be pretty tricky for you guys. So you got to be very, very careful. If you're doing a three ba a battleship set for this, you have to be very careful. You have to kill it very, very fast. Now, if you don't want to do a three battleship setup, you can do um, the Fox Sisters as well. Fox Sisters here can work. Um, even though they're really outdated ships, they can work here as well. Um, let's replace that. You can do Nagato if you want. I personally am whatever about Nagato when it comes to World 12 because she doesn't have anti-air. But you can slot in whatever you want. Um, Key could work here. She has some anti-air. You could do something like this, and then run like a, a anti-air vanguard, and that'll get the job done. You have your two burst damage carrier fox in the back. You have your anti-air ships. This should be good to go. This should be good to go. You, assuming you have the gear, uh, plus eights, I believe, is more than enough. Purples is more than enough for World Twelve. This should get the job done for World Twelve. Blow it up, and you're good to go. This, if you want to do a uh carrier sub now if you want to do a three carrier sub let's do something like this um let's do enterprise we can do uh crane sisters as well this is also another option that you guys can do and this could work as well three three carrier setup means it's a lot safer because there's a lot of planes and there's a mechanic that some of you guys don't know called uh intercepting planes or uh plane collision in the air if you want to call it that way and what this means is if you're playing manual and you see the enemies calling in planes or whatever, you want to airstrike right when the enemy sends their airplanes in. Why? Because what this does is because you have fighters, they collide with the enemy ships and they will kill the planes mid-air if you send it at the exact same time. That's just how the game works. So if you do that, you will up your chance of um, protecting yourself and you're good to go there. So if you're doing a three carrier setup like this, and I highly recommend doing this, uh, you don't have to play as defensive if you don't want for uh, vanguards. Cause like you have three anti-air vanguards right here, right? You don't have to do that much. What you can do is you can do a little bit more durable, a little bit more safety. So let's say you want to use more durable ships, like I don't know, let's do Bremerton. I don't think Bremerton is that tanky, but <laughs> you can put her there. Uh, let's keep Helena in because Helena is pretty much always needed when it comes to boss fleet. You have two heavy cruisers now. It's tanky. It has some damage. You're good to go. Now, why you don't want to have um, now you don't why you don't want to have 
that much damage here is because you don't need it. Uh, you don't have to have that much anti-air as well because you have three carriers. And if you know how to use your airstrikes properly, you don't need them. You can intercept the planes mid-air. Now, kill the planes before it hits your back line and you're good to go. So that's no way. Um, this is the way I would recommend for most people because if you guys don't know how to um, get things done and you guys are playing manual and it's kind of tricky, three carriers can get the job done pretty, pretty safely at um, World 12. So recommend three carriers. If you want to do a one battleship or two carriers or whatever, that works too. Three battleships is kind of risky. Um, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you want to do it that way, you can do it. It's just a little bit difficult, so be wary about that. Now, that is World 12, and that shouldn't be that hard at all. World 13, this is the tricky part. This is the tricky part. This is the part where a lot of people are going to fumble around. They're going to fall over the place. This is the part where it's going to get pretty, pretty tricky. Pretty, pretty tricky. Now, these fleets, um, the fleet that work for World 12, they can work for World 13 as well. But you got to be a little bit more anal on your gear. Um, you got to min-max a bit more. To push for gold gear at this point, guys. Purple gear can push up until World 12 just fine. And, and it can work for World 13 as well. But you got to know what you're doing because you're... You're lowering your damage by like 10%. Even though it could still work, you're lowering your damage by 10%. And because it's on lethal, it's your first time going through World 13, it may, you may struggle a bit. So fleet compositions are very, very important here. First of all, I recommend using Akashi if you're going to use a healer. Um, if, you don't, if you don't have Akashi, Akashi, the best ship that you can use as a support as of right now would be Perseus. Now, I know Perseus is some, a ship that a lot of people don't have, so you can use Aquila. If you have her, put her for double fighters. That would be a very, very good slot. And we can use ships like Ryuho. That can work as well. Her rerun should be coming up soon. And that can work. Um, I will replace Key though. Add in another carrier. So let's do. Let's just throw in a random one. Like, uh, I don't know. Um, let's just do for me. Boom. Done. Two carriers. One heal, or Three carriers. One healer of them. Two damage. And you have two, uh, you have two, um, two anti-air vanguards and one tank. Now Portland doesn't do much damage. I would recommend doing damage in the vanguards, but this can work as a mob fleet. Make sure you have your healer. Make sure you have your your carrier damage, damage. I have at least two of them, preferably, and you have your anti-air vanguards that protect your back line, and then you have your tank right here. Now if I didn't if I didn't say this before, I'll say it right now. The most important thing when it comes to building a World 13 fleet is that the Vanguard protects the back line and the back line protects the, the, the Vanguard. It's a, it's a joint mutualism. So you protect me, I protect you. That's just, just generally how it works. Now what I mean by this is because World 13 is a plane heavy, is a plane heavy map. You're going to need to protect your back line because that's where the planes are going for. Now, they're going to hit your vanguards as well, and that's okay. But your vanguards are going to have to kill the back line. So, we're going to need a lot of anti-air vanguards. So, some examples right here are, let's just click on a random ship right here. Uh, sort by aviation or uh, anti-air. And these will protect your back line. So, Helena, uh, Columbia, Swiftsure. Reno, Balt pretty much every USS cruiser ship is fine here. Um, there's some exceptions as well. Newcastle works. Um, P I'm not going to include PR ships. Don't include PR ships. Not for this video, at least. Um, uh, no, 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 no. Swift, wait, that's a Swift show already. Um, Isuzu, but I don't have my Isuzu leveled up, but she can work right here. USS, though, works really, really well when it comes to World 13. So just keep that in mind. And it goes to go. Now, the, va the Vanguard protects the back line, but the back line keeps the Vanguard healthy. With the heals and whatnot, that's where the healers come in. That's why I say Purse is very, very good here. They will protect and they will keep your back a front line healed. So if your va Vanguard gets healed and the Vanguard keeps killing off planes, no one should be sinking for the mob fleet. And I truly do believe that when it comes to World 13, the thing that people struggle on the most should be the mob setups. Because the boss, I don't believe, should be that, that difficult. But the but the mob setup should be difficult, at least to me. So, high anti-air, damage as well. Um, healers in the back line, and damage should in the back line as well. And you're pretty much good to go there. Now, make sure when it comes to World 13, if it's your first time, I recommend doing uh, using ships at 120 or 118 or higher. 
especially if it's your first time and you don't know what you're doing. If you want to use a little bit lower shifts, because I use that as well, you have to know what you're doing. Otherwise, it may be tricky. But if you don't, though, I highly recommend using 120 ships. Make sure you build the fleet compositions. You're going to have to be a little bit more anal. You can't just slot in Enterprise, Hornet, um, what's their face, uh, Yorktown, uh, just random ships like Laffy and stuff. It, it's, it's probably not going to work. You can use destroyers. Don't get me wrong, you can. But if it's your first time going through it and you're not, you're not that confident in your skills, it's probably not going to work. This is the part, this, this is the stage of the game where destroyers aren't going to be super, super helpful that much. So that's why I don't recommend using destroyers for vanguards. But if you guys really want to, make sure they're geared properly. Also, I want to say this. If you guys do use do PR stuff, make sure they're equipped with these things. High performance air radar. What these things do is they give a 100 anti-air stat to your vanguards. Make sure you have that. It's going to help out quite a bit when it comes to killing off planes. Highly, highly recommend doing that. It's going to help out quite a bit. So slot that onto like Columbia, Swiftshire, and you're good to go. All right. Now, boss setup for World 13. This is the tricky one. This was the one that some pe some people find really really troubling. So I'm gonna help you guys out here. World 13 bossing. It is no different from World 12. It's just it just hits harder. That's pretty much it. Three carriers could definitely definitely work here. I believe what I did was I did Monarch with two carriers, but it can work here. I can use three carriers. One battleship or two carriers. I would recommend though have at least two carriers though, because it was your first time. Two carriers help out quite a bit, quite quite a bit. The most important thing when it comes to World Thirteen bossing is you must have damage. Damage is needed here because you want to end the fight fast. You do not want to stick around fighting a World Thirteen boss on lethal. It will destroy you if you do not know what you're doing. And that's most people in this game. They do not know what they're doing. So you want to have a lot, a lot of damage. When you're doing three carrier setups, you want to save as much airstrikes as possible. Save them because they're very, very important. And then use them. If you're not confident in your damage, use them to intercept the enemy planes that get launched. Your, their bosses here are Taiho, Mogami, and the Crane Sisters. Make sure you time your airstrikes if you're not confident in one-shotting the boss in one rotation or two rotations. Be very, very careful about that. So if you're doing a three-carrier setup, I retract what I said about the, the other thing. We're going back to anti-air vanguards right here. So you make sure San Diego, if you have her, put her in the boss fleet. She will help out so, so much. If you have San Diego, you have Helena. This should be enough to keep your backline protected for them to do the damage to kill off the World 13 boss. These two should be more than enough. Make sure to equip with the uh, performance radar that I said earlier. Because these things, these high 100 AA stats are going to help out quite a bit. You get them from research. These will help out a lot. Now, when you're doing three, uh, three carrier setup, make sure, like I said, you time the airstrike for when the enemy does their airstrike to make sure... You mitigate as much damage as possible on your backline so they don't sink. Because I'm going to tell you guys this right now. If you're doing a 13-4 boss and one of those planes, one of Taiho's planes hit your backline, it does a lot of damage. I'm not even kidding guys. It does a lot of damage. You want to avoid that as much as possible. As much as possible. And you're probably going to have to dodge as well because those, those planes drop bombs that hit for thousands. Yes, thousands on 120 ships as well. You got to be very careful about that. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So this is one step you guys can do right here. If you want to replace the Crane Sisters with like Rabbit Sisters, that can work as well. But make sure if you do Carrier Step, you're running Damage Carriers. Damage Carriers are quite simple to figure out which one they are. So we'll go here. You can do Shinano, everyone's personal favorite. You can do Centaur here as well. This right here could work. Three carrier setups all have high damage. This could work. This could really, really work right here. You can be more flexible right here. I'll give you some good choices. Um, for me could work. Assuming, make sure you have the fighter slot, obviously, because if you don't have the fighter slot, it's going to be quite, quite, quite painful here. Um, Victorious, it could work, but her passive is mainly for um, uh, battleships. And there's no battleships in World 13 4 for bosses, so I don't want to worry about that. Uh, Fox Sisters could work as well. Crane Sisters could work. Graf and Peter Strasser, 
they could work. They had they have some good damage now after after uh, grabs buffs, so that could work as well. Rabbit Sisters could work here. Um, Arc Royal. I won't use Arc Royal here because she has no fighter slot, and fighters are very very important when it comes to defense because these are basically your anti air anti air slots. So you want to make sure you have those. Also, if you guys don't know, for anti air. I recommend using the the pirate corsairs. If you guys don't have enough pirate corsairs, use Hellcats. Hellcats are also very good, if not better than corsairs without the unique skill. So use these two planes, Hellcats and corsairs. Those will be those will make it those will make your life a lot easier when you're doing uh, world 12 stuff. So be careful. About, uh, so do that. Now um, that's just set up for damage and whatnot. If you want to mix it up, you want to do like a battleship because there are some suicide bombers in the map. You got to be very, very careful about that. Uh, battleships. Make sure the battleship you're using is someone who is potent, who's very, very tanky and offers something to the team. You can do Nagato, but if you do Nagato, you got to beat the boss very, very fast. Very, very fast. Key works here. Monarch works here because she's durable. It has damage. Um, FDG. Um... We're not talking PR ships, but you could use it if you want to. I could say Georgia and whatnot, but I'm not going to talk about those ships. USS battleships like Alabama and Washington, you could use them, but I'm not a fan because Alabama has a passive that ramps up, and if you're doing it on one fight, it's, it, there's better options out there, so I wouldn't technically do that, but you can if you want to. Um, Prince of Wales. I want I want to try Prince of Wales. If you're doing something like Enterprise and like Essex or something, because this this was a classic set that a lot of people ran back in the day, uh, Enterprise and Essex for a uh, 13-4 boss. With the new uh, revamp to Royal Alliance, she could be very, very good here. So Prince of Wales could honestly work very, very well with like a setup like this. Very, very well, actually. So keep that in mind. Uh, this could really, really work. Now, uh, if you're doing one battleship setup, Make sure you're durable. Two cruisers like this could work. And make sure you dodge. The most important thing is that you're able to dodge and you're not sinking. So be very, very careful about that. But anyways, though, I believe that's all the steps I can talk about. 13-4 is all about protection, guys. Mall fleet, anti-air vanguards, and the back line protects the vanguard, and the vanguard protects the back line. Mutualism, protection, heal the vanguard. Vanguard protects the back line with anti-air. And when it comes to the boss setups, damage, 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 damage is important. Helena is pretty much always have to be there because of the radar scan buffs she has, which is very, very good for bossing. So make sure you have the radar scans of all at all times. And then do whatever setup you guys want. Three carrier setup, two carriers, and one battleship. You can, do, you can honestly do three battleships if you want to, but it's going to be very, very scary though. If you do three battleships on lethal, it's going to be very scary. So be very, very careful about that. Um, make sure the, the Vanguard slot in the front is durable. Don't use Destroyers at all because they don't have high HP pools. And most of the time, Destroyers don't offer much to a team that because they don't have buffs most of the time, except a, except a few, but we're not going to talk about that in particular. Make sure durable, high anti-air, and backline is just full-on damage for the boss setup. Boom, boom, boom. We're going to knock out this Taiho out the waters. And you're good to go there. So that's my uh, video setup for you guys. Enjoy it. I didn't talk too much about specific setups though. Uh, I could leave pictures, but I don't think I'm going to. I want to be as flexible as possible without giving too much specific details on what to use because I don't want to make sure. Um, uh, I want people to use like specific shifts for like everything because I truly do believe that this uh, this game you can use whatever you want for the most part. And you're good to go, right? So uh, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. And I will see you guys in the next video.